In this video, I'm going to be covering how to make 3D isometric shapes just like the ones you see right here using a hex grid inside Adobe Illustrator. So if I turn on my grid really quick and then zoom in a little bit closer, you can start to see how these shapes were made, basically using this hexagon pattern in the background as the basis for all the shapes that are drawn on top. So first up, I'll be covering how to make this hex grid, and then I'll be showing a very easy way to draw these shapes and then manipulate them to create more complex series of shapes, kind of like what you see right here. So here I have a blank document where we'll be drawing the hex grid, and I will also include a link to my website where you can download a pre-made hex grid that I used on the previous example in case you don't want to make this, but it's really not that hard to do, so it might be useful for you to just go in here and try to make it yourself. So making the hex grid is actually pretty easy, so first up what you want to do is go to your toolbar, and typically it's a rectangle tool that is on by default, so just click and hold over that rectangle until this menu appears, and from this menu that appears you want to select polygon tool, and by default when you draw a shape with the polygon tool it should be a hexagon but if for some reason you draw something with this tool and it shows up like a triangle or something else with that tool selected just click once on your artboard which will bring up this dialog box right here and make sure under sides it says six and then just hit ok so that'll go in here and make a hexagon for you so all you have to do to draw the hexagon is once you have that selected just hold shift on your keyboard and then click hold and drag and as you can see it starts to draw a hexagon and why you hold shift is just so so it maintains the alignment perfectly and doesn't end up on a weird angle that will make this a little bit harder for you so just go ahead and hold shift as you draw that and then just draw this shape as big as you want it to be keep it in mind that the size of the shapes that you draw will be intertwined with the size of this hexagon right here because this will essentially be the grid that your shapes are living on so the bigger these hexagons are the bigger the shapes are and the smaller these are the smaller your shapes are although of course you can change that after you've gone in here and fully made a shape and also what you want to do is you want to select the hexagon that you drew and you want to make sure the straight edges that are currently on the top and the bottom of mine are on the left and the right of yours so just highlight over this with the selection tool which is V on your keyboard as a shortcut and hover over one of the corners until the rotate icon appears and then click and hold while holding shift and just start rotating this around until the straight edges are on the left and the right side and then you go ahead and just let go and next up you want to make sure you have smart guides enabled and if I highlight over this you'll see something that says anchor when I'm on the anchor points or path when I'm on the side in pink text on my screen is probably pretty small but to turn this on you just hit control plus U on a PC or command plus U on a Mac until you see it so I'll hit control U on my PC right now so as you can tell when I highlight over these things I don't see anything I hit control U on a PC or command U on a Mac and then it goes ahead and turns these on so this will be really helpful for aligning these shapes and building our hex grid so once you have your hexagon shape drawn the next step you want to do is with the selection tool just go over on the left side Side of this line right here so you see this path and then click and hold that and while you're holding that you want to hold down alt on a PC or option on a Mac and start dragging this to the right and you also want to hold shift while you're doing this just to keep this on a perfect horizontal plane so you want to do this until it basically makes these two edges on the right side of the original shape and the left side of your new shape overlap so once you have that lined up pretty carefully you can just go ahead and let go and then we have this shape on here. And the next step that you wanna do is actually really easy and fast. So you just wanna hit Control plus D on a PC or Command plus D on a Mac, which will go ahead and just duplicate the last move that you did right here. So we have these new shapes that I've just drawn in right here by holding down that Command plus D. And you can resize these as you see fit to make sure that they kinda of line up for what you want them to do. So next up here, we just wanna highlight all of these up the top here and grab something like, let's say, I'll just zoom in really close here and grab this top Top point and while you grab this you want to hold down alt on a pc again or option on a mac so that it duplicates this and just line these up right here and in this case the smart guide on the left hand side here is letting me know that there's a perfect vertical above these two points you can see that i'm pink on my screen so you might get the same helpful thing happen to you when you go ahead and do this as well so once this lines up and these are locked in place you can go ahead and let go so this is the basic building block for our hex grid right here. So as you can see, that doesn't take too long to do. And next up, what you want to do is actually just select everything using the selection tool. And once everything is selected here, we're basically going to do the same thing except with both of these. So I'm going to go to the middle point of this top one right here. 
and then click and hold on that while holding Alt or Option. I'm gonna bring this down until once again, these sort of lock in place. And this kind of does this automatically for me. I can tell the computer is just making this happen. So just take your time and make sure that these are lined up pretty well. And once they are, you can go ahead and just let go. And then I'm gonna zoom out once again here and just hit Control plus D on a PC or Command plus D on a Mac to once again build up this hex grid. So as you can tell right there, we have a hex grid built and it's pretty easy to do. So this is the basic building block for these 3D shapes. And do keep in mind too, I will place a link on my website to go ahead and download this hex grid sort of pre-made for you if you wanna do it that way instead. So just click on the link in the description where it'll say something like download hex grid and that will take you to my website where there'll be a button to download the actual grid itself. And also when I'm building a grid like this, that's gonna kinda of be in the background of what I'm doing. I tend to like to double click on the stroke right here and change it from the dark black that is the default to something like a fairly light gray so that when I actually take a look at these, when they're not selected, it doesn't overwhelm me too much that I can actually tell what I'm drawing on top of them. I'm just gonna reselect everything quick here too to show another thing. I also like using the stroke window, which is under window, and then stroke, sort of near the bottom here, and changing the stroke to a fairly small number using this drop down box to like, let's say 0.25 point. So I'll just go ahead and click off of this so you can see that change that makes these much lighter and fainter. Once again, it just makes it a little bit easier for me to draw on top of them. So next up here in the layers panel, which is under window, and then layers kind of near the middle here, in case you don't have that turned on already. To the right of the eyeball, there's a little blank checkbox that toggles on or off locking that layer. I usually like to lock the layer that the grid is on so I don't accidentally click it and move stuff around. And then using the new layer button, which looks like a page turning at the bottom of the layers window, I just click that, which will go ahead and create a new layer that I will then draw on. So next part is the fun part because that's where you actually start to draw in these shapes. So this is the basic grid that you'll use to create the shapes that we're drawing. And also it's kind of important to note that the center of each of these hex grids, there is also a point. And that's where the smart guides is really handy to tell where that point is. Once again, turning on smart guides is control plus U on a PC or command plus U you on a Mac. So if you don't see little tool tips as you're doing this, just go ahead and turn that on. So I'm going to double click on my stroke right here and change that to be a darker color. I'm going to pick black and I'm going to go to my fill, which I actually don't want to fill right now. So I'm going to click on that to bring that in the foreground. And below that, there's a little button that looks like a white box with a red diagonal line through it that will say none. If you hover over it, just click that, which will go ahead and remove the fill. And next up, I'm also going to select the pen tool, which is P on your keyboard as a shortcut. So if I highlight over the center of one of these different hexagons that I've drawn in here, you will see that it creates something called intersect. And it says that in pink with a line going up and then off to the side. So that is a middle point that is kind of handy as you're drawing shapes here. So for example, if I want to draw a simple cube, which I'll do really quick here, you just go to each of the anchor points and you know you're on them because it will say anchor in a pink colored text on your screen or whatever color your smart guide tooltips show up as. So just using the basically intersecting points of these hexagons right here on the anchors, I just want to click and start drawing until I have the basic top shape. And I went to the intersect line in the middle of this hexagon right here to know where that point is in the perfect center. And then I'll go ahead here and close off that shape. So right here we have a simple top to our basic cube shape. I like to draw each of the faces or sides of whatever I'm drawing as a complete closed shape because it makes it really easy to recolor that in the future. But certainly if you have a way that you prefer to do that, go ahead and do that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and very quickly draw the side right here by going once again to the anchor points of these four different corners and drawing a complete box and closing that. And then I usually just hit V and click off of it so I can go ahead and hit P again on my keyboard for the pen tool and start drawing a new shape. So as you can tell right here, drawing a perfect little isometric cube, really fast to do using this hex grid because it saves a lot of time just knowing where to make those points. And as you can tell, if I turn off my grid right here in the background, you have a simple cube, really handy. So then I can just go ahead and use the selection tool, which is V on your keyboard or the black arrow and select each one of these different faces and give it a fill color if that's something that you wanna do. So I'll make the top something light blue like this right here. And sometimes if it doesn't take and you don't see that color apply, just hit the little fill button or color button in the lower left just below the fill, kind of on the opposite side of the none box and just click that and then double click on the fill again and select a color of your choice. So I'll just go ahead and make this a little bit lighter. And also it's handy if you have a light source in mind. So 
basically always the shapes on the left side will be either lighter or darker than the ones on the right side to kind of give this a false sense of depth that's a little bit more realistic. And also if you want to quickly copy colors, you can select a box and then just hit I on your keyboard to bring up the eyedropper tool and select a box that you want this to be colored like. And in this case, it makes it the same blue color, but then I can double click on my fill right here, which will bring up this and I'll make this one to be a little bit darker than the top. And then I can go ahead and do the same thing on the other side right here by hitting I on my keyboard to bring up the eyedropper tool. Eyedropping one of these that I kind of want to use as a baseline, double clicking on my fill right here, and then selecting a color of my choice to go ahead and make that side. And as far as the actual stroke goes, if I highlight over this all, you can tell they all have a black stroke. The fill looks like a question mark because there's three different fill colors. But you can either use the stroke or not use the stroke. But I found it's generally helpful to keep the stroke on there until the very end, in which case you can then just select a color, go to select same, and then fill color, which will select all of that fill color on your entire screen, or just highlight basically everything on your screen, and then select the stroke right here, and then select none if you don't want anything to have a stroke. But just for making it easier for me to know where my stroke is, I like to kind of leave these on at first here. So I'm going to highlight this entire shape and then hold Alt on a PC or Option on a Mac and drag this to a different part of the grid right here until it intersects. And you can tell it's doing that because it will say intersect using the smart guides. And a way to very easily extend these shapes or change how they look is to hit A on your keyboard, which is the direct selection tool or the white arrow in your toolbar, and just highlight over the points that you want to extend. So if you want to extend the top part, you want to select these top four points right here. So if I do that, select it all by just dragging over it. And then I click on that top point and start dragging it up while holding shift just to keep it perfectly vertical. Otherwise, it will end up being on kind of a weird angle that might not look good. So just hold shift as you drag this up and you can make that as tall as you want it to be. If you want to drag the bottom one, you just want to select these bottom three points right here, doing the same thing using that white arrow and then click on the bottom anchor point right here, dragging that down while holding shift. If I want to make one of the sides longer, it's the same basic principle, but you just want to select basically the four points or however many points it is on the side for you to drag those. So it's these bottom four points on the left right here. And then I usually find it's helpful to use the point that's the furthest off to the side and dragging on that anchor point. And you just want to go ahead and drag this anchor point off to the side using the grid that you've drawn to help you know what angle to do until you get to this point and then just go ahead and let go. And as you can tell, that very quickly drew a side extrusion to this shape right here. It's pretty similar to how a 3D program tends to work where you have a basic shape drawn that you can then extrude or change up to make it look how you want it to look. And also if it makes it easier for you to move stuff around, you can just highlight over a shape once you've completed it, hit Control G on a PC or Command G on a Mac to go ahead and group that. And then as you move this around, it'll be perfectly grouped and they won't kind of break off based on the sides that they're on. And if you ever want to draw a more complex shape, the basic thing still applies. So I'm just going to remove my fill right here. So I'm just drawn with a stroke then hit P on my keyboard for the pen tool. And I'm just gonna draw a little bit more complex shape and I tend to just kind of follow the mouse along these lines right here so I know where to draw them. So I'll just make this something kind of like this, for example, which will make sort of an L shape. So I wanna go to the middle intersect point and you can of course make these as wide as you want so you can make it double wide if that's something you wanna do. I tend to just for whatever reason draw these as a single width based on like a vertical line point right here on the side. So I'll go to this intersect point and then go off to the top here, just following this line path on the grid. So it's a little bit of thinking in terms of how these shapes work out and how they follow the paths on this grid. But once you do it a little bit, it actually goes pretty quick. So here is the top facing part of this. So I'll hit I on my keyboard for the eyedropper tool and just grab this lighter color for the top. Once again, I'll turn off the fill here and I'll just draw both of these sides in one right here. So as you can see, it doesn't really take much time to go in here and draw simple shapes using this grid system because the grid system really does most of the work for you. Here's this face right here that will sort of be all on its own because that is kind of like a little cap shape right here. So I'll just draw a little square for that. And then I'll do the same on this face right here. And I'm just switching between the V key on my keyboard and the P key on my keyboard for the pen tool and following the grid shape that I drew in the background here to draw these shapes pretty quickly. So I'll go ahead and close this shape off. So right here we have a completed L shape. So you can see how to make a little bit more complex shape. Then I'll just highlight each part of these sections, hit I on my keyboard for the eyedropper tool and select the appropriate colors for these so they can go ahead and fill in pretty quickly right here. And now this is a completed shape. If I don't want there to be a stroke line on it, I can just highlight the entire thing, go to my stroke here that is a black stroke and then hit this none button and click that to remove it. So now it's kind of a 
bit more of a flat shape, which is a stylistic choice that you can make. And of course, at any time you can click one of these fills, double click on the fill right here, and then change that to be a different color if that's something that you want to go in there and do. But I'll just leave my shape the way it is. And then once you have a shape completed, like I said before, you can highlight the whole thing and then you can actually just move them around on your artboard too, paying attention to where stuff falls on the grid. So always try to keep your shapes lined up on the grid here. So right now this shape is on top of this shape that I drew previously. If I want it to be in the bottom, I can right click click on it and then go to arrange and then send it back which will push it to the back or in this case it looks like it's kind of butted up against the side here so if i want to make this look a little bit more natural i can just highlight this shape right here go to the stroke and remove that one as well so that these all look like they're part of the same thing so right there we have sort of a basic building block shape that looks pretty cool when it's actually built up here and as you can tell it's really easy to do that and once again like i said before when you're moving a shape around i'll use this one since it's a really simple shape just always try to keep it within one of these little pre-made grids right here so that it lines up so that way basically when you're done everything lines up and makes visual sense also if you want to you can of course scale these down and combine different scales of shapes together to make a lot more interesting stuff so if i hold down alt and then shift at the same time and scale this down it'll scale from both the center point as well as be perfectly symmetrical when it scales so it doesn't end up looking like a weird distorted box kind of like this although if you wanted shapes to look like this you can of course make them but lining it up on the grid might be a bit of a pain for you if you go in there and do that so just draw the shape as big as you want and then let go once you're done and then you can of course just bring this down on top of this other shape right here so you can sort of see how this looks so it's kind of a cool way to work if you want to go in there and do that and then if i wanted to i can make another shape even smaller on top of this one and you can kind of get the idea of how to very quickly draw some building like shapes and if you wanted each one of these top points to be like a little bit lighter to kind of keep up the idea of a false height you can of course go in here afterwards and make these small adjustments to sort of help with that realism factor as you build more complex shapes so I'll just zoom in on this a little bit closer here so you can get a good idea of how this looks. And then of course you can turn on and off the grid that you built by hitting this eyeball icon so you can see how your stuff looks without the grid and just get a better general idea of how your shapes look as you're building them out. But then of course you can turn that grid back on, select shapes, and then move them into place by using the grid and then you're well on your way to building stuff. But that's it for this tutorial. This is sort of like the basic building blocks that you need to build more complex shapes as you continue going on here. So use these basic principles to draw like really complex shapes make really complex intersections is totally up to you how you want to make these look and as an example there's a game called monument valley that's really pretty and uses a style similar to this so i put a couple of these examples on my artboard right here just for you to kind of check out and use as inspiration once again the game is called monument valley and although they built it using a bit more complex 3d software than adobe illustrator for example something like this building on the right right here i think is totally attainable inside illustrator if you wanted to spend the time to go in there and do that so feel free to pull some really awesome inspiration like monument valley if you want to see how these complex shapes can work together and create some really cool fascinating looks that are sort of mc escher-esque in their appearance so what i showed you right here is just the beginning of what you can do so make some really cool stuff using this i actually think it's a lot of fun to do so if you found this tutorial helpful please hit like and favorite and if you want to see even more stuff like this please subscribe i do my best to keep new content coming for illustrators and designers thanks for watching